was a breezy day. The sun was shining bright on those glowing, jolly faces which were dripping in sweat. Immense smashes were shot at each other in the battleground to defeat the LIC star, who was the champion of all the apartment sports competitions, who was the gang leader. Just then, another boy invaded this battleground to disrupt this joyful moment of these badminton boys. He took out the great weapon with a bright handle, the broomstick. But this was filled with tiny, stingy, sugar craving ants, red ants. He enviously logged it at the LIC star and it fell on his head, shouting, Pakistani! Those tiny creatures stumbled all over. Now the LIC star was furious. He was running behind the villain to catch him because the villain had previously taunted him many a times. So he caught him by the collar, looked him in the eye and said, you tell me Pakistani once again. The villain, staring into his red, fuming eyes, said, <laughs> Pakistani. Just then, the LIC star reached out and hit the villain. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and dear guests. Any guesses who that LIC star was? Yeah. Yes, I was the LIC star. And little did I realize that I had hit him with the hard gutted badminton racket right below his eye. I, scared and trembling, ran away. But the problem stayed. I was called out, I was shamed, put down in front of everyone by his father and was threatened to, put, to be put behind bars. But that day, my parents knew I wasn't wrong. So they pulled me out of that mess. I swore that day that I would never raise my hand ever again at anyone. But one thing my parents told me was, son, next time you're never going to raise your hand or resort to physical action, respond and don't use physical action against anyone. That thought stuck deep into my bones and nooks and corners of my body and responding rather than reacting became my motto. I went on to befriend the father, beat him in every single badminton match and the villain came with his head bowed down to apologize to the LIC star for the comments he threw at him. The comments and taunts followed me like my shadow every single day into my school also. The comments of me belonging to another country, Pakistan, irritated me and haunted me every single day. The comments, the demeaning statements of the way I looked because I was fat and having no friends led me to constantly doubt myself. Each time I fell down, I was told and grilled by my parents to get up and fight back. That's when a hidden talent came to my rescue through the medium of Tabla. I was practicing hard for long hours. Finally noticed by one teacher, I, was, I made my way onto the big stage where I played at the Founders Day. That performance was the most memorable performance I had ever given and was life changing. I had melted those rigid hearts. The comments and taunts stopped immediately and my shadow was walking with its head held high and its chest puffed out, feeling proud that I had responded rather than reacted. I had become famous throughout the school and getting the best artist twice while graduating was an exuberating feeling which I could never express. I thought that my path of my journey of the life was clear of all these petty comments. But that thought was instantly wiped out when I entered my college. This time, I was battered with harsher comments. And the worst being an allegation made by my professor. 
myself, that I was directly associated to a terrorist group. To use force again was the only way out I saw. But one thin line stood between me and the professor was that ethics inculcated in me by my parents and the respect for a teacher. Now it is said that when you are in dire straits, you have no option left, the Almighty throws you on a lifeline. In this, in this case were my HOD and my friends. Nitin, Abhiram, and Amog. I became the head of the most prestigious college clubs in the second year itself. No one had ever accomplished that. I went on to publish a paper in the same subject that the professor took, who threw that comment at me. The feeling was yet again of ecstasy. But then I had learned how to completely respond rather than to react. This is when I let out to you one secret, one little secret which is priceless. Between every reaction and response, any cases, exists the greatest weapon of mass success, the choice. The choice for me was always to respond. If the choice of mine was to react, I would have been dismissed. I would have been put behind bars. I would have ruined my engineering career. I would have got a black mark attached to my name throughout my life. And I wouldn't be standing here sharing the story of mine. I am ever grateful to my parents that they had given me this priceless thought. And I should say this, my guru, my sister, Nadia, who taught me, who claims to have taught me how to communicate. And those mentors in my life, like my HOD, my friends, mentors from here, Meghala, Jayashree, Natarajan, Arvind, who came at different stages of life, of my life, to rope me out of difficult levels of life. Now every one of you, each one of you in this room, is worth it. And what do you do? You are in the greatest game called life. You are players of this greatest game. It is the hardest game anyone could play. And it's definitely difficult to learn it. But this life is going to be filled with bouncers zooming past your head. You know, hooks and jabs and everything thrown at you time and again, throwing you hard at the ground. So what are you going to do? For example, this is a soda can. I shake it up. And this is a water bottle. It is your choice to be a soda can or a water bottle. It is your choice to respond or to react in this condition. 